In this lecture, we're going to talk about all the different fittings that you can use on PVC systems. There's a number of different things that you can do. We'll get beyond basic couplings, elbows, and tees, and talk about all the different ways that we can connect stuff to the pipe, how we can change directions uh, of the pipe, all the different things with the bushings that we can use, the threaded and the slip fittings. And we're going to switch over to a desk view here of what we've got, and we're going to talk individually about each one of these fittings. So we're going to talk about PVC fittings, and we're going to just go real quickly here through them and talk about a couple of different situations and some different fittings. This here is a 90 degree elbow. It changes directions at a 90 degree, and you have a slip by slip. We also have a, an elbow here that is a slip by thread. This one is a one inch slip by three quarter inch thread. And this one is used at the end of a pipe run to supply a head, usually is where we use this. We'll take the three quarter inch barbed elbow, thread it into here, and now we can attach half inch polyethylene on this and go out to a head. So there is other places that we want to use this, but this is most commonly where it's used. And um, let's talk about the 45 degree elbow. This one changes directions at a 45 degree. And this one, on average, loses 1.3 PSI per fitting versus the 90 degree elbow, which loses 3 PSI per fitting. So let's say that you had to change directions. You could use two 90 degree elbows here to, let's say you had to go up and over you know, an elevation change or really anything. So if we had two 90 degree elbows here to change the elevation or the direction, whichever way you wanted to do it, we would have three plus three, a total of six PSI loss in this setup. If we used a, a 45 and another 45 and did the same thing, what we have here is 1.3 plus 1.3 and that's 2.6 PSI loss versus the six total PSI loss we would have had if we used the 90 degree elbows. So I like to use the 45s and um, it, Andy, my old technician, my old company, he called me the king of the 45s because I would, generally when I was cutting a trench, instead of going out and making a 90 degree elbow, I would cut 45s wherever applicable so that we would use parts that have less friction loss and overall end up with a better performing system. We have a T, and this is just a regular T, and we call it a T because it looks like the English letter T, and this provides you know three different directions, and we also have a slip by thread tee here that has one inch slip on each side and a three quarter inch thread in the middle. And of course, these come in all different sizes. But for this one here, we use this partially down the way. Let's say we've got a pipe run going this direction and we have heads every eight foot or whatever. We put one of these in line and then put our barbed elbow on it so that we can supply a head and run on out there. We do have another fixture here that we could use, and this is a slip by swing, is what it's called, and this is a one piece molded here, and what this does is allow you to adapt over to half inch polyethylene and run out to the head. The only problem I have with this is in the cases of where you have damage that uh, happens upstream and rocks or clay or dirt or whatever gets pushed down the line, if you get something that's stuck down in this fitting, you can't get it out and you end up having to cut the pipe and replace this fitting to clear that head up versus if you use one of these kind, now it takes a, a couple of seconds extra to put in the, uh, the barbed elbow into the fitting, but let's say you've got rocks down in there, you can take this out turn the pressure on and blow it out. And I've had to do that many times. And I used to use this type of fitting exclusively just because it saved a little bit of time and a couple of cents versus these two parts. But in situations to where you've had rocks clogging systems up, it's always better to have a two part piece here that you can take out and um, or take loose and allow the, the dirt and the rocks to flush up through there. So that's my advice on that particular bit. Now, we also have other ways that we can change directions here. This is a three-quarter inch four-way. Some people call it a cross. Obviously, it looks like a cross, and it, you know, you put this in between two different directions going there. So, always good to keep a couple of these on the truck. Let's talk about couplings. 
This is a one inch, just straight slip by slip coupling, but you can also get a coupling that is threaded all the way through. And this is a thread by thread. It's just called a threaded coupling. I use these all the time to change head locations and so forth, but I generally use them in three quarter and half inch sizes versus the one inch size. So no threads, it's called just a coupling. All threads, it's called a threaded coupling. But if it is half threads and half slip, it's called a female adapter. And we have the converse of that, the, the male adapter, which gives you a slip by thread. And obviously, this is male in reference to the male anatomy and the same with the female here. This is a male adapter and this is a female adapter. Female adapter is slip on one side, thread on the other so that they can fit together there. But there is a situation to where I would always use a female adapter with a threaded nipple. Okay, the problem is with these male adapters, and it depends on the place that you use it, but it's weak right here in this corner where it mold changes from thread to the, the uh, socket for the other part, but it's weak right there. And if you're using this to connect to heavy devices like backflow preventers, you may end up getting slight cracks right here and it's a good bit of problem to dig a backflow preventer back up and change this particular fitting out. So whenever I'm dealing with brass devices or situations where I think there may be pressure on that particular joint, I'm going to use a female adapter with a Schedule 80 nipple in it which is much more durable and is able to withstand much more pressure and flexing and so forth without breaking. So this is what I use exclusively. If you're just going to supply a head at the top of a stalk or just, you know, something that doesn't have a lot of weight on it, a male adapter will do just fine. You have a couple of other elbows here and these are called street elbows. And it's possible to get these in different configurations. This one is a, a slip by mail adapter. And you also have the, the, uh, the inverse of that, which is the, uh, the female adapter on one side. And then it goes down to a, a half inch fitting on the other side. So you have all different types of fittings here that can switch back and forth. But let's talk about caps. Real quick here though, this is a the bell end off of a piece of one inch pipe. On one end, it is just a regular one inch slip. And this is a, a one inch cap, a, a slip cap. And it fits here, but this bell end here is flared out like this so that we don't have to use couplings when fitting together long 20 foot sections of pipe. We can just stick the next piece of pipe in here and it has a nice deep nest or socket for you to get get down into there. So and it provides a really good bond. But oddly enough, when people put these bell ends together when they're putting pieces of pipe, this is a common area for leaks. I think they get in too much of a hurry and, and don't make sure that this entire socket is primed and, and full of glue that's smeared into the fitting. So we have caps that we can just cap off an end, but we also have a plug that will fit down inside of a one inch. This will fit, of course, in that bell end, but it'll also fit here in our coupling. It's just made to fit inside of a one inch socket. Let's talk about another fitting here. This is a saddle tap that's meant to be drilled into. If you can see here inside of it, it's completely smooth. And then it has a place here that is threaded and it has a little socket there for you to drill down into. And this is meant to work by snapping it on and generally what's supposed to happen here is once you put this on and this is supposed to be I guess an already assembled portion in a place where you couldn't cut loose and and change up to a different type of tee but just snap this on glue it obviously and wait for the glue to dry and then drill down in here for a place to pop a new hole into a pipe the only reason I don't like to do that is no matter what you do, as far as drilling that down into there, you're going to push some PVC shavings down into the pipe. There's another device, and I haven't used it. Um, I generally don't use this type of fitting for these purposes, but there's a device that you can screw down into here and then pop it, and it uses a circular blade to cut a hole down into the pipe. 
Now, the, I, I'm not so crazy about that idea either, but I've never used one, so I can't really give you an opinion on whether it works well or not. But every time I'm in a situation to where I would need to put an outlet on a pipe, it's always upstream from a pump or a, a sprinkler head or something like that to where I don't want shavings of plastic going down into here. So what do I use this for? I actually use this as a repair fitting in case you have a, a hole or a tiny split in a pipe. Sometimes when people are probing around, say sewer guys or somebody, they have these long steel rods and they're probing around trying to find a pipe, they'll pop a hole into this. And so what we could do is cut the pipe and put a full repair on here with a slip fix or whatever. Or if the, if the hole is not too big or it hasn't cracked the pipe, what I do is I just, you know, prime and glue this up and snap it over it, let the glue dry, and you've got a great fix there. There are other ways of doing it, and I've seen people uh, take pipe and split it open and try to use this to clamp around it. But the problem is, is that the, the diameter of this doesn't fully seat around the other pipe. That's why I like to use these saddle taps in these type of repair situations. Maybe you'll want to use them as they were intended to and get one of the little devices that allow you to pop a hole out of there, but eventually you're going to end up knocking some plastic shavings somewhere where you don't want them. When it comes to bushings, you have a couple of different options here. This is a slip by thread bushing, and it is used to change the size of a pipe. We go from a one inch down to a three quarter inch thread. You have different kinds of bushings, slip by slip, thread by thread. You can change sizes from two inch all the way down to three quarter inch. There's all kinds of different sizes of these available. But I wanna bring one thing to your attention. And that is a reducing type of fitting here versus a bushing in a coupling. This here is a one inch slip by three quarter inch reducing coupling here. And we have a, a one inch coupling with a bushing down inside of it. So which one is gonna do the better job or does it even matter? Um, in fact, it does matter a little bit because this type of fitting here has less turbulence occurring in it. Let's take a look at a, an illustration here, and you'll see how this just has a smooth transition over from the slip to the threaded part, which is our, our bushing down um, without a bushing. It changes sizes there versus a coupling that we use a, an actual bushing in to change from one inch slip to three quarter inch thread. And so this illustration shows that where this lip is and where these meet, this is going to provide a whole lot of turbulence in here and going to cause us to lose more PSI with this fitting than if we use this type of reducing coupling or reducing fitting here. 